Hello friends, it's me Nidhu. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Healthy Hand for Nurses. This video includes 20 questions from the topic Nursing Research and Statistics. Most of the questions were uh, taken from the previous Nursing AIMS exams. So I hope that it will be helpful for you. And please keep watching the video. And if you like this video, please like it, share it and subscribe it. And also click the bell icon so that you will get notifications if I'm uploading new videos. Let us start the video. First question, a statement of the predicted relationship between two or more variables in a research study is called. Options A. Assumption B. Proposition C. Operational definition D. Hypothesis Answer is D. Hypothesis So, hypothesis, it is a statement of the predicted relationship between two or more variables in a research study. An example uh, for hypothesis is Alcohol consumption causes liver disease. Here the two variables are alcohol consumption and, the, uh, uh, and liver disease. So it is a predicted relationship between two or more variables. Then coming to the assumption. Assumption are the statements that are considered to be true but they are not scientifically proved. For example, the statement that is a god exists everywhere in this universe. It is considered to be true, but it is not scientifically proved. Next question. Which of the following type of studies is an example of qualitative research method? Options A. Cross-sectional design B. Correlational studies C. Ethnography D. Survey design Answer is C. Ethnography So, ethnography is an example for the qualitative research studies or qualitative research method. And the rest of the options that is cross-sectional design, correlation studies, survey design are examples for the quantitative research method or quantitative research studies. So the research design it is classified mainly into two that is quantitative research design and qualitative research design. Quantitative design is again divided into experimental and non-experimental. Experimental is again divided into true experimental, quasi-experimental and pre-experimental. And non-experimental which is mainly uh, descriptive studies and it consists of survey, correlational, exposed factor studies, comparative studies, evaluative and methodological. Then uh, coming to the qualitative uh, research design, it includes phenomenological research, ethnographic research, grounded theory research, historical research and case studies. So first qualitative uh, research study is a phenomenological research studies. So phenomenological studies examine the human experiences through the descriptions that are provided by the people involved. Phenomenological studies examine human experiences through the descriptions that are provided by the people involved and these experiences are called lived experiences. So the goal of this type of research is to study the lived experience of phenomena among people. An example for this phenomenological research study is a phenomenological study on lived experiences of tsunami victims in certain villages of Tamil Nadu. Another example is lived experience of amputated patient due to diabetic food condition, a phenomenological study. Next one is the ethnographic studies. Ethnographic studies involve the collection and analysis of data about the cultural group. Ethnographic studies involve the collection and analysis of data about the cultural group. That is, it is mainly focusing on uh, to study the cultural aspects of the population. An example uh, for this ethnographic study is to discover and understand the traditional beliefs and practices of food pattern in rural Charuta region. Next qualitative study is a grounded theory studies. Grounded theory studies are those studies in which Data are collected and analyzed and then a theory is developed that is grounded in the data. So these are those studies in which data are collected and analyzed and then a theory is developed that is grounded in the data. Next one is a historical research. Historical research it is a systematic collection and critical evaluation of data relating to past occurrences. Historical research is systematic collection and critical evaluation of the data relating to past occurrences that is it is a scientific study of the past occurred event an example is a historical research to understand the development of nursing research in india next uh, qualitative research study is a case studies case study uh, the main aim is to study de detailed individual cases 
main aim is to study detailed individual cases. An example is an in-depth study regarding the nursing care of a diabetic food patient. Next question. The tools used for data collection are Options A. Questionnaire, interview schedule, observation, checklist. Option B. Survey, observation, checklist. C. Experimental, non-experimental. Option D. Participant observation, information booklet. Answer is A. Questionnaire, interview schedule, observation and checklist. So the tools used for data collection are interview, questionnaire, observation that is like checklist, rating scale, anecdote etc. And also biophysical method and other methods like Q sorts, big nets etc. Next question, which of the following is not considered as a component of the research problem? Options A. Research instruments B. Variables of the study C. Study population D. Research setting Answer is A. Research instruments. So the components of the research problem are research design, research variables, population and research setting. Next question. A clear concise summary of a study that communicates the essential information about the study is called. Options A. Construct, B. Concept mapping, C. Abstract, D. Proposition. Answer is C. Abstract. So abstract it is a clear concise summary of a study that communicates the essential information about the study. Or otherwise it is a brief summary of the research article. Next question. The following are the data collection techniques used in the community assessment except. Options A. Making appropriate judgments. B. Organization and comparison of problem. C. Effective communication. D. Investigation and measurements. Answer is B. Organization and comparison of problem. Next question. Dissemination of research can be done by following methods except Options A. Publication in scientific journal. B. Oral presentation. C. Post presentation. D. Informal discussion. Answer is D. Informal discussion and rest of the methods can be used for the dissemination of research. Next question, which of the following is a measure of central tendency? Options A. Standard deviation, B. Median, C. Coefficient of correlation, D. Regression. Answer is B. Median. So the measures of the central tendency include mean, median and more. Next question, which of the following is a measure of central tendency? Options A. Range, B. Standard deviation, C. Mean, D. Ratio. Answer is C. Mean. Next question, validity of a tool refers to Options A. Consistency, B. Acceptability, C. Accuracy, D. Feasibility. Answer is C. Accuracy. Validity of a tool refers to accuracy. Validity means the degree to which an instrument measures what it is supposed to measure. Validity means the degree to which an instrument measures what it is supposed to measure. Valid tool means a tool should only measure what it is supposed to measure. For example, a thermometer should measure only the temperature. Next is the reliability. Reliability of a research tool means the degree of consistency and accuracy with which an instrument measures the attribute for which it is designed to measure. Reliability of a research tool means the degree of consistency and accuracy with which an instrument measures the attribute for which it is designed to measure. A tool only can be considered reliable if it measures an attribute with similar results on repeated use. Next question. All the following are qualitative research methods except Options A. Correlation B. Ethnography C. Grounded Theory D. Phenomenology Answer is A. Correlation Correlation is an example for correlation study comes under quantitative research method and uh, uh, 
uh, ethnography, grounded theory, phenomenology are qualitative research methods. Next question, which of the following is a measure of central tendency? Options A range, B standard deviation, C mean, D ratio. Answer is mean. So mean is a measure of central tendency. Next question, data that include all measurable and observable pieces of information is called Options A. Object data, B. Hearsay data, C. Subject data, D. Documented data. Answer is A. Objective data. Next question. The value of highest frequency in the data is Options A. More, B. Mean, C. Standard deviation, D. Median. Answer is A. Mode. So the value of highest frequency in the data is Mode. Next question. In statistics, spread of dispersion is described with the help of options A. Standard deviation, B. Mean, C. Mode, D. Median. Answer is A. Standard deviation. In statistics, spread of dispersion is described with the help of standard deviation. Deviation of value from the average value or central value, it is called the measures of dispersion. And it includes a range, mean deviation, standard deviation and quartile deviation. And among this range and standard deviation are the most commonly used measures of variability or measures of dispersion. Next question, which type of error is committed in testing a hypothesis when the researcher accepts null hypothesis that is actually false? Options A type 3, B type 2, C type 1, D type 4. Answer is B type 2 error. So when the researcher accepts null hypothesis that is actually false then there occurs type 2 error. Null hypothesis is otherwise known as a statistical hypothesis. It states that there is no relationship between the variables. So when the researcher accepts null hypothesis that is the researcher accepts that there is no relationship between the variables even though a relation exists between the variables then there occurs a type 2 error. Coming to the type 1 error, here the researcher rejects a null hypothesis even if it is true. In type 1 error, the researcher rejects a null hypothesis even if, even if it is true. That is here the researcher accepts that there is a relationship between the variables even though there is no relation. So that is the difference between the type 1 and type 2 error. Next question. Sampling method which involves random start and then proceeds with the selection of every kth element uh, from then onwards is called. Options A. Simple random sampling. B. Stratified random sampling. C. Systematic sampling. D. Snowball sampling. Answer is C. Systematic sampling. So systematic sampling is a sampling method which involves random start and then proceeds with the selection of every kth element from then onwards is called systematic sampling. Sampling method is mainly divided into probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Here uh, in this question, uh, simple random sampling, stratified random sampling and systematic sampling are the uh, examples for the probability sampling and snowball sampling coming, coming under the non-probability sampling. Simple random sampling, here all the members have an equal chance of being selected. Random methods provides an unbiased pro-selection of the population. For example, if uh, we wish to draw a sample of 50 students from a population of 400 students, in that case, uh, place all 400 names in a container and draw out 50 names one by one, that is, in a, that is randomly. So, uh, in this picture also, we can, say, we can see that we are selecting the samples randomly that is uh, we have selected two randomly and then five then eight then ten etc next is the systematic sampling in this sampling every kth element from the list is selected from a randomly selected starting point that is uh, in the starting point we are selecting randomly and then every kth element is selected so k is the sample interval and uh, how we will get the k that is k is equal to population size divided by sample size 
For example, in this picture, we are having the population consisting of 12 members and we, ha we have to get 4 samples. So, 12 divided by population size divided by sample is 12 divided by 4, we will get 3. So, k is equal to 3. And the starting point we are selecting randomly. So, here we have selected uh, second member randomly and then every kth element that is every third a third member is selected that is 5 then every third uh, next third element is 8 so this is a systematic sampling next is a stratified random sampling in this the population it is divided into uh, various smaller homogeneous groups based on some characteristic and from each of these uh, strata members are selected randomly that is a population it is divided into smaller groups based on some characteristics and from these groups uh, or from these strata uh, the members are selected or the samples are selected randomly next question what is the other name of null hypothesis options a direction hypothesis b scientific hypothesis C. Research Hypothesis D. Statistical Hypothesis Answer is D. Statistical Hypothesis So the other name of null hypothesis is Statistical Hypothesis that is it states the existence of no relationship between the variables. Next question What is the term used for a careful appraisal for the strength and weakness of a research study? What is the term used for a careful appraisal for the strength and weakness of a research study? Options A. Research Critic B. Research Abstract C. Research Synopsis D. Research Proposal Answer is A. Research Critic Next question Which among the following is a type of non-probability sampling? Options A. Systematic Sampling B. Stratified Random Sampling C. Purposive Sampling D. Cluster Sampling Answer is C. Purposive Sampling and the rest of the sampling are the uh, probability sampling. So the sampling it is mainly divided into probability and non-probability sampling. Uh, simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified random sampling, cluster sampling are coming under the probability sampling. So we have already discussed what is systematic sampling, stratified random sampling and simple random sampling. And the remaining is the cluster sampling. Let us see what is this cluster sampling. In cluster sampling, researcher selects sampling units at random and then does complete observation of all units in the group. Researcher selects sampling units at random and then does a complete observation of all units in the group. In this example, uh, two groups or uh, two groups were selected randomly, and here all the units in the groups are completely observed. So that is a cluster sampling. So friends, these are some of the questions from the topic Nursing Research and Statistics. If you like this video, please like it, share it and subscribe it and also click the bell icon so that you will get notification in future. So thank you for watching the channel.